This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More from them later. Shows like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette are arguably some of the most influential reality dating shows we've seen on TV. They've been the blueprint for so many shows to come after. Even expanding into shows like Next on MTV or... Dream Date with Brent Rivera, God damn it! technically, it's it's the same concept. Where you have one main contestant and then a group of other people sodding after them, all fighting for their love. While people every episode are getting booted off, narrowing down to one last person. So my question is, how can we take a show like The Bachelorette, for example, and make it even better? Well, for one, you'd have all the male contestants wear masks, thus highlighting their personalities, which you will see is not a good thing for them. None of these guys have good personalities. They're all, they all fucking suck. Now you might be thinking, who would host such a show? Well, none other than Monica Lewinsky. That one, not not the other one. For whatever reason, I, I don't know. <laughs> now I've actually been planning on making this video since probably December. I, for whatever reason, have just not wanted to touch this show. I mean, I do, but every time I sit down to do it, I just, I just hate the show. <laughs> but I figured since I started Beef with Spoons a few weeks ago, the best way to keep this beef going would be to just copy one of his videos. For real though, Mean Spoons have talked about this show and just how bad it is, and he knows I'm making this video, so it's all good. Well, probably. Now with Mr. Personality, I discovered the best way to get a rundown of a show, and that is to just watch the second episode and nothing else. And no, that's not because it was the only episode I can find on YouTube for free, but I'm fucking lying, that's the only reason. But this episode is more than enough. What happens when one extraordinary woman who has only dated men the ordinary way, must pick the love of her life without ever seeing his face. Probably nothing eventful. Like, at all. She's playing us like a f fiddle. I can't do this. I think I'm out. This is not a game. This is a lifelong decision. Now I want to talk about the masks these guys have to wear, because they are frightening. As I said before, they are supposed to highlight the personality of these men, which none of them have a good one, so these masks aren't helping. Whatever they look like underneath cannot be any worse than the Crayola gimp masks that they are forced to wear. Haley, a 26-year-old single career woman from Atlanta. I'd like to take a moment to appreciate the term career woman. I honestly forgot that was a thing. This woman, not normal woman. Women have job, and job make woman career woman. Haley had to choose 10 men to eliminate who were unmasked, revealing faces and regrets. I think this actually totally sucks. He totally missed an opportunity. Nothing like being told you missed out on an opportunity to assure you that you, in fact, did not miss out on an opportunity. <laughs> it's a true test to find out what happens when bad alcohol meets good guys. Okay, let, let's take it easy on the whole on the whole good guys thing, all right? They all suck in one way or another. Right? They're either weird, problematic, or wildly immature, or all three. They really are a colorful group of guys, and I'm not saying that because of the colored masks, even though now that I say that out loud, that's a better joke. Now in this episode, the first night is going to be them kicking back, having some drinks, and hanging out by the pool. Until drama ensues, of course. They're all hanging out in the jacuzzi, having a good time, staring at Haley's body, when Chris swoops in and takes her inside to get a drink. And everyone's freaking pissed about this, especially Michael. I didn't like really when Chris pulled her out of the jacuzzi. Because he really wanted to get to know Haley and find out who she is as a person. That's not right. I didn't like really when Chris pulled her out of the jacuzzi, but we never got a really good look at her in her bikini. Okay, yeah, that's it. Nothing drove men in 2003 more wild than girl in bikini. Some of these guys are just like vultures. Some of these guys are real vultures, and it freaking sucks because it doesn't leave me a lot of room to be a vulture myself. And uh, then I was stuck in the jacuzzi with three drunk guys. Go for it! Go for it! And I was stuck in a jacuzzi with these three other drunk guys, and there wasn't really much else for us to do, so we just started screaming, I don't know. Now guys, I want to take a real quick moment here to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. Classes in fields like art, animation, web development, business analytics, productivity, and so much more. Skillshare is perfect for learning new skills or mastering old ones in your free time. For example, I personally have been loving the class YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. Marquez Brownlee is a creator that I've always respected on the platform, so I was really excited to see what his class would have to offer, and it did not disappoint. Although I've been making videos for over a decade on YouTube now, I was surprised at how much I was able to learn from this series and just be a better video maker overall. Not only has it taught me to make better videos, but to be more efficient at making them. As you guys can see, I've been posting a lot more lately. So everyone say thank you Marcus Brownlee and Skillshare for giving Chris the skill set to make more videos. So guys, if you have a specific skill you're trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. So let's make 2022 the year of self-improvement. So that's why the first thousand of my viewers to sign up through my link in the description will get a one-month free trial to Skillshare so you can start exploring your 
creativity today. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now back to Mr. Personality. When I went out to, to grab Haley from the pool, I thought for sure, you know what, let the games begin. Holy shit, Chris sounds like a 50 year old man. The voice does not match his face. So as Haley and Chris are talking, we discover that Chris fundamentally does not understand the concept of this show. This is not a competition. We lost you for a while. I was just upset that we had a little group thing going on in the jacuzzi and she took off. Yeah, we don't know why she didn't want to stay in a hot tub with four screaming drunk guys. It just doesn't make sense. I'm kind of bummed out, I gotta be honest. What was going on upstairs? Instantly, Will, all he could talk about was, well, why did you leave the group and why were you so rude? I think Haley's right. Maybe he should have just thrown a couple of buzzwords like, the heart and clicking with her and saying a whole bunch of nothing like the last guy. This is a quote unquote game about the heart. Really admired Chris for stepping up and saying, hey, I want to spend some time with you. I want to get to know you. Think you'll know when you meet the heart that's right for you and that clicks. Now while they're talking, a couple guys off to the side are spying on them in the most cartoonish way possible. They are 15 feet away hiding behind the skinniest plant in the house. But even funnier than that is fucking Vengeance popping a squat at the top of the stairs like a gargoyle, just watching them in the creepiest way possible. Chris seems to be around a lot, um, you know, sort of in the shadows and such. I don't know if Chris had been up the stairs the entire time. I was very surprised that he had been up there. I thought it was a little strange. I was very surprised to find out that Chris had been at the top of the stairs the whole time, like, he really did a good job of blending in, like, he's become one with the shadows. So as Haley's being escorted back to a room by guy with a mask that's a color, I don't fucking remember any of their names, they walk by Chris, who is utilizing the Drax method of not being seen by just standing still. But then Chris finds a way to make it creepy, of course, and just goes in for a touch of her material. We do have a, uh, a big day tomorrow. Yes, I can't wait. Maybe Chris thought he was protecting me like a guardian angel, but... To be honest, it really creeped me out. I just don't know what I'm gonna do about him. I'm thinking it was at this point that the showrunners also were realizing the liability they have let on set by just allowing Chris to be here. There's no telling what this man will do. That's oh. yeah. crisp cold water. You know, I wonder if any of the guys in the show got athlete's head from wearing these masks for so fucking long. Now guys, so far the only person whose name I've been able to remember is Chris, and that's not because it's the same name that I happen to have, even though well, that does play a big part. But mainly because they focused on him the most, and also he seems to be the creepiest out of a bunch of already creepy guys. So when Haley says stuff like, Joseph really needed to take today and, you know, own up to what he did last night. <laughs> I don't know who or what she's referring to. I am relying on some heavy context clues. No, I'm really not a drinker. I, I don't, uh, What don't was do it about job. last night that, uh... Uh, just every time I turn around, somebody feeds you more alcohol, so... Okay, now I'm seeing that she's just referring to the you took my beer breath away guy who drank a little too much. You, know, you, you make my breath fall away every time I see you. What, I've wanted that since I was four years old. You know, I, I really... What to... type of girl is that, though? You're, you're lining up pretty damn close. What is it? What? This show really just took the horniest group of men they could find because they are all obsessed with Haley, not even knowing shit about her. Except that oh, she looks good in a bikini. They have all been quite vocal about that. My, my feeling is that people can have more than one soulmate. I mean, you're not just a soulmate. Could, you could be my soulmate. I, I guess I should clarify that, you know, there's a bunch of different interpretations in my mind of soulmate. I mean, it can be a guy, it can be a girl, it can be uh, a soul connection to uh, a group of people. I think a person can have many soulmates. Like, Haley could be my soulmate. Hell, even you could be my soulmate. You know, a girl, a guy, a group of people. I think it's just really who you find a connection with. Ew, dude, gross, come on. Here's what I want to know. Why should I fall in love with you? I, I would have to find out more about you before I could answer that. I could tell you what I have want to offer somebody. What do you have done? It's just as important to find out if she's compatible with me. This man needs to realize that he cannot ask those questions, especially with that tone, when his hair looks like this. This man is the closest a human has ever looked to a character in Shrek. <laughs> Here I am! Hey, Stan! Hey, now it's time for Stan to play his own game called How Can I Get Voted Off This Show As Quick As Possible? And he is currently in the lead. Brian said to be very aggressive, oh, so that's what I'm gonna wow. do. Oh, wow, hey, here like we go. Like it or lump it, we're gonna actually pretend. Princess of the Surreal <laughs> and I on the boat together. This may be a little foreshadowing of the future right here, don't you think? How about that? Uh, sometimes I get kind of goofy like this. 
I honestly, I don't. I'm going to make, uh, I really, I've done this before too to make, oh, I won't do that to you. I'm sorry. We're not really connecting. And if I'm being honest, I don't know why. I mean, I've done everything right. I pulled her into my clutches. I did the old shine the sun in her eyes trick and nothing. I really want to emphasize how funny it is that he just shined the sun in her eyes by lifting up her sunglasses. Like, what was he trying to accomplish there? <laughs> also, I know the boat is not that big, so all the guys have to be huddling around watching as this is happening. I really wanted to see them, you know, give me a little bit more today and really just didn't, didn't get it from any of them. I think by now Haley's starting to realize that all these guys suck. Like, the best ones just don't suck that much. But now the next night they have a luau, which is pretty similar to the night before, except now there are extra girls in the mix to, uh, stir the pot. Oh my goodness. And for whatever reason, Stan still doesn't think that he is winning at his own game, so he decides to do whatever it takes to get voted off even quicker by just quitting. Might I add, in the lamest way possible. Stanley stops the party cold and makes this lame speech. I don't know, I think I've been agonizing over enough. I think that's really what. Dude! That's what I'm just gonna have to do. So yeah, my easiest joke punching bag just leaves the show 15 minutes in, so fuck me, I guess. I was very surprised at how much these guys wanted to give the other girls some attention. I get what she's saying here, but like, what do you expect them to do when you're just talking to one person at a time? Should they just wait in line to embarrass themselves in front of you, or should they have the freedom to go off and embarrass themselves in front of other people? I was very surprised how immature a lot of these guys uh, presented themselves to be. It was truly a test to see were they going to drink excessively and sort of act like buffoons or were they going to keep themselves composed. While I'm still on team none of these guys, I don't know what she's really complaining about. They all just seem to be dancing at a luau. Like maybe it's the reality TV show editing manipulation, but it just looks like they're dancing. I mean, they still look like idiots, but they're just dancing. But Haley can't take any more of that, so she takes red guy to the dark room. I was allowed to take one man to the dark room and I chose Mike. Now the dark room is a room that is, well, dark, thus allowing the guys to take off their smelly masks while Haley has to wear a blindfold, which I don't get. If the room is dark, then you know what? Whatever. In all reality, I would leave my mask on because I know that thing has got to smell like death at this point. Pete he went way overboard. He was running around just being stupid as all could be. You had to look at it through my eyes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You gotta look at it through my eyes. And? Huh? You said we have to look at it through your eyes and then you just didn't say anything else. Look man, I don't know what to tell you. Oh my god, whatever, I don't fucking care. Well, I'll give you a little tour if you come up with one. <laughs> this is the- this leads the way to our wing. Now while Haley's in the darkroom with... Guy, Brian decides to take one of the other girls upstairs. We hear them hot mic'd up in the bathroom, obviously up to no good, but the funniest part is this guy just fucking spying on them in the most childish way possible. <laughs> Maybe I like this. <laughs> so you like the mask? Why do you like the mask? It provides a little energy. Oh, wow. You know, uh, second thought, why don't you put that thing back on? I think a lot of women have um, fantasies where they have sex with a man they are not really sure who he is. Yeah, I think a lot of girls have a fantasy of, like, hooking up with a really hot guy or a guy with your face that covers it up, you know, that kind of thing. You, you've just got to see this. This is what they call the deliberation room. Now, this was the point in the show that I found out it was hosted by Monica Lewinsky. Like, I didn't know up until this point, so it threw me the fuck off. If you asked me to guess who hosts this show, I don't even think my first 500,000 guesses would have Monica Lewinsky in them. So Monica shows Haley the footage that we just saw while she was downstairs, desperately trying to get that guy to go to first base with her. Better, I can show you why. So after seeing that, Haley the next day confronts a couple of guys about their actions that night. For example, she confronts Pete for the kind of lap dance that he got. You know, one of a particular lady was sort of dancing with you very seductively. He assures her that it's okay because it was one of those lap dances where you don't exchange bodily fluids, as opposed to the other one. The way I look at it, it's, um, there, there was no exchange of any kind of bodily fluids. And Haley obviously takes that very well. Thanks for coming up. I appreciate your time. Okay. 
But then of course she has to confront Brian over his actions in the bathroom. Just had been talking to a couple guys and they said that you had left with one of our lady guests and something may have happened. Seeing him in that mask head on like that was genuinely a jump scare that I was not ready for. <laughs> I don't think up until this point we've really seen shots of the guys in these masks head on like that. It's like when you see Phineas from Phineas and Ferb from the front for the first time and it just creeps you the fuck out. Up until now I couldn't quite put my finger on who he looks like but he looks like the thing from 2005's Fantastic Four. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck okay. with your, uh, your decision. I'm sure it's going to be tough. Okay, thanks. So guys, now it's finally time for the voting off portion at the end. And I think Brian knows he's going to get voted off, so he decides to get ahead of the situation and just voluntarily leave. Because they can't fire you if you quit. I think I have to unmask and uh, be on my way. I love that you can tell by just the look on her face, she's just like, ah, <sighs> thank fucking God. But Brian doesn't get off that easy because Monica decides to fucking come for him. <laughs> I think you are a beautiful, intelligent, charming. You know, I, I just, I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt because there have been rules that have been set up and in a moment, everyone was gonna find out. These other guys are here, they've gotta find out too. It's embarrassing for anybody who doesn't get selected. I also just have to say that you're actually one of the guys going home. She said, I'm gonna get ahead of you getting ahead of it and make you fucking suffer. And I love it. <laughs> I wish that in the ultimatum, Nick and Vanessa Lachey had this kind of ruthlessness when everyone was deciding to just propose to each other and ruin the fucking structure of the show. You wanna find out a little bit about him as yeah. he goes? So, well, Haley, you felt he was confrontational to you. Also love how Haley's just like, Monica, just read, my, read my lines for me. I don't fucking care anymore. Last night, I had a better time with this girl than I've had with Haley since I got here. Yeah, because you got your dick sucked in a bathroom. Like, we all know why. Well. I love how for Will, the only footage they have of him that's notable at this point was just him doing a backflip into the pool. Like that's all he's really done. <laughs> I was upstairs watching to see how she gonna respond to these guys and, and how she gonna interact. Now, while I knew she was gonna boot off those other guys, it still sucks seeing her pick fucking Creep Batman Chris. Like, it makes sense, but I'm still disappointed. Well, you guys are real men, because here you two are standing, right? Absolutely. You both are all, you both are just awesome. I know that those guys are probably loving the fact that Brian pulled his little stunt at the beginning of this, because that means them getting booted off for Haley wanting nothing to do with them has much more of a positive spin on it. Now, halfway through covering this episode, I found out that there is actually one other episode on YouTube, and that is the finale. Now, while I'm not gonna dive into it, I did at least wanna see who makes it to the end. And wouldn't you know it, it's fucking Will, the guy that did the sick backflip into the pool. There's something to show you. I guess that's all right, because from what I saw in this episode, he's like, not the worst. Oh my god, just open your fucking eyes already, please. Oh. I mean, okay. So guys, that was Mr. Personality. Not, not all of it, but enough. Maybe, maybe even more than enough. But yeah, guys, I hope you did enjoy today's video. Don't forget to go check out Spoon's video on this show as well. Anyways, guys, thank you again for watching, and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring, and with that all being said, I will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.